I am very happy to be this evening with you presenting um, a continuation of my first conference concerning the history of and management of forests in Bukovina. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to make a short sort of presentation. I am graduated in forestry in seven, 1976 at the Faculty of Forestry in Brasov. And um, since uh, 76 till now, I was a um, scientist in the Forest Research Institute. And um, my topics in the research was the forest um, ecology and uh, mainly the forest abiotic disturbing factors uh, like uh, snow, wind, drought, and the last 20 years climate change in our forests. My presentation for this uh, evening uh, uh, is uh, about the dynamics of the structure and function of the forest of the Bukovina in the last centuries. And uh, I said in my last conference that the province of Bukovina was annexed by the um, uh, Habsburg Empire in 1775. So um, in, uh, this, um, in this slide, you see the position of Bukovina in uh, Romania, and you can see that uh, partly of Bukovina can be superposed to the actual Suchava County. And the right part of the uh, picture show the um, map of flora and vegetation distribution in Bukovina at the end of 19th century. So you can see that the distribution from eastern to western part of Bukovina of vegetation start with the um, um, silver steppe region in yellow, with the hell green is a broadleaf forest, mixed broadleaf forest, with green is beach and uh, beach forest uh, mixed with silver fir and uh, spruce and uh, yellow green, the most part of the region are spruce forest and mixed spruce forest and nori spruce. So during the period uh, from 1775 till uh, the end of the first world war, this region was managed according with the Habsburg and imperial rules. This figure changes in the organization and management of the area, not only of the forest, and these changes are visible even today in comparison in other areas of Romania. Because of the low population density in the region and to low accessibility until the end of 19th century, more than 90% of the forested area preserved the structure and aspect of primeval forests. So can explain that even today we have rest of primeval forest in all the vegetation belts of the region from the Siret um, alluvial plains dominated by oaks till the upper mountain area with stone pine, um, dwarf pine and spruce, massive spruce forest. Huge trees of spruce and, nor and uh, silver fir, you can find even today in um, secondary forest remained after the exploitation of the primeval forest of the region. So that um, trees with huge dimension until two meter diameter, 60 meter high and more than 40 cubic meter in volume, you can find all over in Bukovina, but mostly in the reserves like Slatiwara primeval forest, which are reserved from the beginning of 20th century. I said in my last conference that um, in the second half of the 19th century, when the accessibility of the richness of forest increased, all the forests were managed, that means more than 250,000 hectares were managed according with the programs for the forest management plans based on the method of age classes. You are here um, extract of maps of um, forest district Brodina, all the management plans until the end of uh, first uh, world war or in German. So knowing German language, we uh, can 
uh, investigate all the data registered in the forest management plans. Based on the old maps, descriptions and inventory made in the forest management orgs, um, we have all the area of Bukovina managed since 1817. And uh, the studies which made in the forest reserves, we have established and mapped three structure types, structure types in relation with the intensity of human activity in the area. The basis of our study represent the forest management. And you know that every 10 years, a management plan is revised. The revised, that means that new, um, new evaluation of the state of the forest and new plans for the future uh, management are proposed. You have here the cover of different forest management plans which describe in details all the aspects concerning the area, the history, uh, the past management, the actual state of the stands and the future activity of the forest. Only for your information, I present here the content of a forest management plan and you can see is about 500 pages, 500 pages in six chapters. The first is a general description of the organization of the forest. The second chapter is the history and uh, the past management of the forest in the forest district for each of 27 forest districts because the forest of Bukovina were um, uh, managed in uh, forest districts with an area between 10,000 till 30,000 hectares each. The third chapter is the Bestandesbeschreibung in German. This means description of the stands. And you, if you look at the page, you see from 23 page to 226. That means more than 200 pages with description of the stands. Each parcel and sub parcel are very detailed descript, described and all the details of the stand in each, uh, uh, in each etap of uh, management are uh, presented. The fourth chapter describes the structure of age classes in the period. The fifth chapter is the plan of cuts and um, uh, thinning proposed for the next 10 years. And the sixth, um, uh, pay, uh, sixth chapter is, uh, is focalized on the plantation and regeneration of the cutted area, mustard the must uh, clear cut area. Mr. Bob, I, Mr. Bob, I have a short question. Please. So you presented this uh, structure of a forest management plan for uh, more than 100 years ago. Was it common in the, let's say, German countries more than 100 years ago? I mean, this was also present in Austria, for example. This would be the first question. And the second question, what do the currently current forest management plans have in addition to this uh, structure that was used more than 100 years ago? Please. Thank you. This is a very good uh, question. Um, uh, no, uh, this is not uh, comparable with not any other forest management plans from Europe, even from Austria, because the structure of the property of the forest in Europe is totally different comparing with the Bukovina. I said that the forest of Bukovina, more than five million hectares, were confiscated by the Habsburgs from the monasteries, and they were managed in a hand by the so-named um, religious fund. Uh, that means the fund of former religious forests. So this system of management plans for huge area 250 hectares remains after uh, 100 uh, year of uh, colonization of the of Bukovina well managed after a special method developed here for large areas nowhere in uh, in in Europe where a lar such a larger area managed with the same methods and uh, 
uh, described, described uh, with the same uh, 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 accuracy. This can explain how the professors from all the forestry faculty in Europe come at the end of 19th century uh, under the coordination of the famous professor Gutenberg from University for Soil Science, Universität für Bodenkultur from Wien to see how the huge area, massive area of the forest of Bukovina are organized and managed in a hand. So this is a particularity which give the specificity and the, um, the activity of this forest. The archive of the forest management plants uh, in our institute, in our research station, conserve most of the forest management plants for all the um, forest districts. And uh, uh, we are um, very grateful to the former director of the Forest Research Institute, which uh, conserved in our archive all this uh, uh, management plants. They are in German, and uh, not everybody can uh, read in deep all the description and all the characteristics of the forest presented here. But only for your information, you can see here the structure of age uh, classes uh, for um, forest district Brodina. This is in the upper valley of Suchawa. And you can see from a total of 11,000 hectares, more than 8,000 hectares are in sixth class age. That means more than 130 years, uh, 20 years old. Generally, such stands are untouched stands located on the slopes of the valleys and uh, not other intervention until the management uh, plants are made. If you look, the other uh, age classes from one to five are very small in area. You see the concrete area, the real area, and the normal area in red is the normal area of an age class. And you see the excess plus, plus excess 6,000, 6,373 hectares are in excess in six plus. Not only the area, but also the volume for another part of the forest district is presented here. The first column is the age classes. The second column is the area in hectares. The third column is the volume. And you see from a total of 2,381 hectares, 2,234 hectares are in the sixth class over 120 years mean age. The volume also, you see from a total from 1.3 million hectares uh, cubic meter, 1.2 million cubic meters are in primeval forests. That means this forest untouched by the men. I must note that all this um, data in the forest management plan were very um, deeply verified in terrain and also in the, um, in the plans so that the quality of the information uh, offered by this forest management plans is very good and on the basis of these plans, we made our study until today. If you look at the description of the stands, you see a very high similarity with the actual forest management plans. I must only note that the system of forest management plans in Romania adopted after 1948, when all the forests of Romania were confiscated, and the first measure was to, to make to measure and to make forest me uh, management plans after the model of Bukovina, because more than 70 years, this model proved that it's possible to manage in one hand, huge area of the state forest. Because comparing with a, a communal forest, with a private forest, which are very small, 
and with different objective to, uh, to, to, to manage, there are very big differences in the model and the structure of the forest management plants in other uh, countries of Europe. And we must mention that until the end of the uh, 19th century, the Europe were uh, uh, very, um, very different concerning the political system, concerning the social, economic, and uh, uh, religious uh, system. So Bukovina is an exception because such a huge area confiscated since uh, 1775 were managed in one and so can explain that most part of the forest were transformed in agricultural lands, in pasture, in uh, high uh, producers and uh, uh, locality uh, with huge quantity of uh, colonists like that. But if we look at the description of the stand, I uh, show you only the first four columns. You see the number of parcels, the description of bottom and lager of soil and site condition, and the third column is the description of the stand. And you see the composition of the stand, Fe, this is Fichte, uh, Norway spruce, 06, just a moment, 06, Ta is Tane, silver pearl, 03, Bu is beach, Buke, 01. Also is the mean age 145 years the production place according with the Iceman system is a system uh, which uh, was functional in the 19th century the best uh, production class is five uh, the uh, density index zero seven the area of the sub parcel and the volume in heart and um uh, this is beach and the uh, Resinos, 540 cubic meters. So in total, this parcel has 580 cubic meters per hectare. And you see also the volume uh, for beach and uh, for resinos, for conifers, uh, for the whole parcel. All the parcels are very detailed, described not only in the composition, but also in the vertical structure and in the patches produced by different damaging factors. If you look you see wind would fresh here. That means an area destroyed by wind. So wind occurs not only in the even edge uh, uh, stands, but also in the uh, primary uh, forest. And you see an area of 14.1 hectares divided by wind. And so on and so on. You can see that on this description, we have all the data concerning and the operation of the management plan give us also the information concerning the operation and the uh, uh, structure of intervention, human intervention to SCAT uh, and other uh, aspects, uh, forestry uh, aspects in this. Mr. Babu, you mentioned that uh, the data were checked in the field. Could you please explain for the public who is not uh, for who, who hasn't um, have forestry studies but is very interested to know how is doing how what do the foresters check in the field what they looked for yes in the field the engineers because all the the the, the data in turn were obtained by engineers and technicians brigadiers so they are special special um, formed in a, a branch of forest administration, which was named Forest Einrichtungs Branch. Uh, that means forest management plans. For example, the chief of this um, uh, this, this branch for uh, forest management plans were more than forty eight years chief of the branch and know all the parcels like uh, uh, his. Uh, 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 so the control was made on the basis of the statistic description of the stand because in each stand they apply statistic plots in which of on one hectare in which they measure all the trees 
uh, over 16 centimeter diameter, and also all the characteristics of quality of trees. So they were very interested to produce quality data to, uh, to, to, to ensure that the quality and the quantity of wood which they will harvest is uh, uh, real and uh, they not spend a lot of money for nothing. So I, uh, I explained in my last conference that in 1883, the research station was installed in Bukovina with the goal to, to, to develop methods for the estimation of the characteristic of the stents. All the stents were um, measured uh, using topographic uh, system and the maps are very detailed maps at the um, scale one to 25,000. So as a short conclusion, if may allow, you mentioned that the first forest management plans from Bukovina were, let's say, have had German-based, which is also common today. Our currently forest management plans, which are very like that, the one that were used 100 years ago in Bukovina. So they do have some German-based from planning perspective. But in somehow we are unique in Europe. This is what you mentioned earlier. Is it correct? Yes, 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 yes really. Uh, German is a general term because Austrians, they are also Germans, but uh, they don't like uh, very much uh, uh, Germans because in the period they had many uh, wars between Habsburg and, uh, and uh, Prussian. Uh, so uh, German is a, a common, uh, common term. But at the period, the German was more than 40. Uh, uh, kingdoms are uh, very different. Even now, you know that the lands, the, the country, countries in the Germany are different system of forest management, of forest management plants, and all, all over civil culture. So traditionally, they are not uh, in the same system. But this system was developed according with the Austrian systems, which developed first of all for the forest uh, of uh, the uh, the, the, the kingdom, uh, the state for, for the state forest. But nobody, nowhere in, uh, uh, in Austria, they have such a large area of state forest. They're only patching, alternating with other property uh, system. Our scientific investigation in the primeval reserve allow us a better evaluation of the changes that occurred under the impact of human activities in the actual forest. Such information also highlights the distance between the natural and actual managed forests. You see here some example of the structure in horizontal and vertical plan of stands. Each uh, graph represents 1,000 meter area with a profile in horizontal and vertical plans. The first one left upper is in Slatiwara Reserve. And you can see the diversity of dimension of species with different uh, symbols are presented, silver fir, spruce, and uh, beech. And in comparison with primary forest, the secondary forest upper right you see are more even edge stands developed by the remain um, young trees after the cutting of the good quality trees in the forest. In the lower part of my graph, you see real data concerning the structure, horizontal and vertical of actual forest, mainly uh, even edge forest, mainly dominating by spruce and, uh, uh, and uh, silver, silver fir, mainly without broadleaves, without beech. This image gives us a picture of the changes occurred after the cuttings produced in the last part of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. 
I know that you mentioned also this idea you know, during the last conference, but I want to ask you please to explain once again, why did this happen? Why did the foresters release, uh, cut the beech forest and uh, planted spruce, for example? But, which was the main reason? Yeah, the main reason was that uh, beech has no value at the end of 19th century and beginning of 20. You, you remember that even in Romania, beech has no value only as fire, uh, wood, uh, and uh, for local utilization. Um, so, for the industry of uh, pulp and paper, and mainly for the construction, for wood and um, for furniture, the wood of coniferous are more efficient and more easy to use than uh, the, 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 the randomment of uh, production of pulp and paper of resinous is higher, more much higher than the uh, beech and other broad leaves. So can explain that for huge area, even in Europe, the beech and the oaks were cut and replanted the area with pines and spruce. It's the same situation in our country. Um, at the beginning of the 20th century, all the or mass part of the uh, mixed forest were planted after the clear cutting were planted with spruce. We will explain all these uh, aspects. I have only one short question because I'm very curious and I know you know the answer. And I want to share it, at least to share it with others. Which was the largest compact area that was clear cut in that period of time? Uh, until 1895, the mean area of clear cut um, slope was 1,000 1, hectares. That means a hydrological basin integral was clear cut. So let's say, uh, let's say a full mountain. <laughs> yes. Yes. Professor, Opre Professor Opretal made a um, uh, very detailed study published in 1913 concerning the area of clear cut uh, forest in Bukovina um, before and after the uh, realization of the accessibility of the forest with uh, railroad forest. Uh, winter uh, transport uh, forest uh, uh, and other uh, system of uh, wood uh, access uh, or, or forested access. Um, but we must note that uh, the clear cut at the end of 19th century and beginning of 20 is totally different in comparison with what we mean now clear cutting because in the period, clear cutting represent cutting all the trees with a diameter higher than 28 centimeters and lower than 80 centimeters. All very old and very big trees remain in, in the stand because were difficult to transport. And generally, the quality of wood was not very good because of rot. They were 400 years or more. And young, trees, low dimension of uh, wood was not useful and the cost of, uh, uh, of the transport of wood was too high. So we, sh we will sh uh, show you some picture with the aspect of forest after clear cut and practice at the end of 19th century. Only some um, information concerning the ecological condition and the forest ecosystem distribution in the region. Uh, I uh, write some uh, sentences here, but I must note that the large amplitude of the altitude from 200 meters to 2,000 meters in the Kaliman Mountains, for example, and to hard uh, mountains, uh, show us a very large type of vegetation belts which occur in all the ecological and site condition of the region. We must note that the relief of the Carpathians induce a very large uh, and very differentiated site condition, soil, climate, and relief. And also we must 
note the particular feature of the Carpathian chain, which are determined by, here, by their massive character of the mountains here in the area. The width is 120, 130 kilometer, which impose modification in the airflow at the border of the Carpathians and inside the Carpathians. So we know that the Carpathians chain show clear influences in the climate of Romania and not only, also in the whole Central and Eastern Europe. In our country, Carpathian imposed five climatic subregions. So only uh, some information about the variation of temperature. You know that the gradient of temperature is 0, 0, 0 0.55. Uh, degree Celsius for each hundred meters, and the amplitude of mean temperature is from nine degrees Celsius at two hundred meters in the valley of Prut and uh, uh, Dnester, and to minus two degrees in the highest peak of Periman. So you see a very very large amplitude of temperature, and connected with this all the extreme of these valleys. Concerning the rainfalls, I said that the massivity of the Carpathians impose a very um, unequal distribution of the precipitation. We have made a very detailed analysis of the distribution of the precipitation based on the 53 um, rainfall uh, station, and we observe a very interesting um, effect of continentalism imposed by the massivity of the Carpathians in the middle, in the depression of Dorna and Kempulung, for example. Here you have a graph which represents in the abscess the rainfall quantity and uh, in relation with altitude on the coordinate and the fascicle of, uh, of, of, of the lines show the continentalism index according with GAMS. And you see in this ellipsis all the belts of main um, vegetation types from the oaks and uh, the uh, mixed uh, uh, broadleaf forest to hilly beach forest, mixed, dominating mixed forest of resinous and uh, beach, and a very large area uh, between 50 and 70 uh, degree of continentalism in central part of the Carpathians spruce forest. This is only for the from the specialist. But if we look to the ecological niches produced by the relief, climate, and soil, you can see the cassettes representing the most important forest ecosystems in the region. And what is to, to note is that every forest ecosystem has a very specific position in the um, large palette of ecological condition of the Carpathians. Each number represents a dominant forest uh, type. With red, it represented the dominant silver fir forest in the Eastern Carpathians. In this sketch of maps, you can, you of map, you see the distribution of forest in Northern Carpathians. With yellow, they are broadly forest. With red is mixed forest, beach, silver fir and spruce, and uh, with green, a uh, dominant spruce and silver fir forest. You see that the dominant part of the forest are spruce and I present to you very short, six um, main intervals or events in the management of forest since the confiscation of the forest till present. And you see that the first line presents the period 1786 till 1867. 1786 is a time when the first forest code, Nand Orunduiala pentru silvicultură în Bucovina, sau Orunduiala de pădure pentru Bucovina, give by the Emperor Joseph II, the son of Maria Theresia, which put law in force concerning the use of the forest. The 
year 1867 is the year of the construction of the railroad which connect Vienna to Lvov, Chernovitz, Sutrava, and Buko, the forest of Bukovina. So the richness uh, forestry of Bukovina can take the roads of the Europe. So in this period, only irregular and selective cuts for local use and for potash are mentioned. The lack of accessibility of forest and the transport were limited only at the uh, large uh, uh, rivers like, Buk uh, like uh, Bistrita, when we're um, uh, plotting uh, uh, wood where uh, transport. The second etap is uh, between 1867, after the construction of railroad um, system, and 1897, end of 19th century. In this period, the local timber industry is highly developed and dominant are clear cutting in the mountain area, main, mainly in the mixed forest, more accessible than the upper mountains uh, in the um, Bistrica and Dorna uh, valleys. The surface of clear cutting were estimated between 1,000 and 2,000 hectares. That means whole hydrographic basins were clear cutted in five or 10 years. According with forest management plans, the used volume in relation with the stand volume represents only 11 to 44%. The most part of the wood remains in the forest because in the primeval forest, the quality of wood and the very large uh, palette of dimension of woods are not um, uh, uh, good to produce very good quality of wood for um, transformation in industrial systems. So, in this period, were generalized the system of the forest management plans and all the forests were transformed through clear cutting in um, even edged forest. It was not simply and uh, not easy. Another period is from 1897 till the end of the First World War, when a construction of the network for forest roads and forest railway under the command of Professor Josef Opletal, I said Professor Opletal was the director for invest of investment in the Bukovina Religious Fund. Um, and uh, a decentralization of cuts in area not more than 100 hectares. 100 hectares was the normal area of a clear cut at the period. In this period, must Treatment used for the harvest of the forest was clear cut and shelter wood in mixed forest with the objective to stimulate the regeneration of uh, silver fir because after clear cutting, silver fir regenerate uh, not, so, not so good. Um, it is estimated that the volume of cuts were comparable with the allowable cut calculated in the forest management plans. I said that after the end of, uh, 19, of uh, the, sec the First World War, Bukovina uh, was united with the Romanian kingdom and until um, 48, 1948, all the forests remains state forest and managed after the same rules uh, as before. But in this period with this large accessibility system, the clear cutting area of the parcel are reduced at five to 30 hectares, mainly in the high mountainous uh, forest. Uniform shelter wood with short period in mixed forest also is practiced in mixed forest. And dominating is plantation of Norway spruce in very large area. Very small area are planted with silver fir and larch with the objective to increase 
the stability of stands to win. According with forest management plans, the total volume of the cuts represent between 77 and 80 percent of allowable cut. Another period starts after the Second World War when all the states in Romania were confiscated and Romania uh, must pay a lot of uh, duty to the uni uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet Union. Uh, so, uh, Sovrom, mainly you remember that uh, mixed uh, enterprises, uh, Soviet uh, Romania, uh, clear cutted a lot of integral basin in Bistrița, in, uh, in Suha, uh, in Moldova, and uh, Suchava in, in the region. Um, a characteristic of this um, uh, period is the appearance of huge damages produced by wind. So the plantation forest installed at the end of 19th century become more and more sensitive. And since 48, a lot of damages occur in the area, mainly in the even age stands. The total volume um, uh, harvested, exploited, uh, in comparison with other uh, uh, volume, they pass between 15 and 80 percent for the whole area. But there are forest districts in which the, uh, the, the volume extract were two or three times higher than the allowable cuts. Also, we must uh, note that uh, according with the forest code, the clear cutting area is reduced at three, five hectares, but the area damaged by wind can be more uh, larger than one or 200 hectares. So can explain that plantation in very large areas with young plants produced in uh, 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 spruce produced uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the garden are dominant in the in the region. Also, uh, frequency very high frequency of damage produced by game roe deer and red deer in the young plantation and young stands are registered. Only for your information, in uh, um, 19, 1977, we uh, made a statistic inventory of damage produced by game in Suchawa, and we obtained that more than 12% of total area of the forest were damaged by, by game at more than 60% of the trees. Incredible. So. Mr. Babu, could you please go back to the previous slide? Because yes. I'm very curious about those millions of cubic meters resulted from wind damages. Which was the hardest year, let's say, when we recorded the largest area damaged by wind? Uh, it, is, it is difficult to... To, to say which is the must. But the most important is mainly 1976 and uh, 2002, the last um, wind damage in Bukovina 20 years ago, 21 years ago, produced huge quantity, more than 8 million cubic meter, only in one night, 6 to 7 March, to uh, 2000, 2002, in an area of about 170,000 hectares. Uh, with my students from University Yash, we made a very detailed map, mapping of all the areas damaged by wind, and the results are very, very surprising because the distribution of damaged area is. Um, 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 uh, particular distribution according uh, uh, with uh, um, modern uh, modern uh, uh, law and the modern discipline of uh, uh, mathematics, which is uh, fractals. Maybe one uh, one one time we will discuss about this. Uh, so 
we will show that um, periodically um, you see data 48, 67, 60, 64. Maybe 64 was larger than, uh, than 2002, but comparable. Every, every large episode of wind damages produce more than 5 million cubic meters in Suchava County. This the past two or three times, two or three times the year allowable cut in, in, the, in the region. It's incredible. Snow damages, for example, uh, in 16, 17 of April 77, we had an episode of huge amount of snow, which produced on a very large area, mainly in the mixed uh, forest uh, region, 12 million cubic meter damaged wood. Most of them were uprooted and uh, trunk uh, break and the representing five to six million cubic meter and must be harvested in the first year. The rest represent the crown uh, breaks and uh, some trees uh, can be uh, remained uh, uh, in, in, the, in the stand because such a huge quantity of damaged wood is impossible to harvest in a very short period because the risk of uh, insects attacks is very, very high. So I, I hope that I uh, respond at your, uh, the three types of uh, structure which we mapped and calculated for the whole area of the forest of Bukovina are primeval forests. That means old forest with old arch with big dimension of trees without human intervention by cuts. And you see in the forest management plans, mainly with mean age over 140, 150 years. Another type, very easy to, 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 to present, is the secondary forest, which are naturally regenerated forests on the place of ancient primeval forest after clear cutting of the uh, second uh, half of 19th century. Artificial stands represent artificial and naturally generated stands after cutting of the secondary forest, mainly the forest cutted after the Second World War. You see here the aspect of a old primeval forest in Sturpikan near the Slatiwara forest and the huge quantity of wood of low dimension used for the organization of the wood transport of good quality wood. So I can explain the quantity of useful wood was so low. You can see also in the second plane of the picture, the aspect of remained forest after this clear cutting. So another one, clear cutting is totally different in acceptation at the end of 19th century and today. Another aspect of the extraction of beach in the mixed forest after the transport of resinous and coniferous forest for wood, wood for fire. This is beach and an old installation for wood transport. You remember, because in the history of the forest exploitation, forest harvest, we have studied only as a method. And another one, you see the aspect of primeval forest remain after this clear cutting. All the trees, younger or with diameter lower than 28 centimeters, remain in stands. And they produce the secondary forest about uh, which I uh, discussed. So you see this line uh, with the wood uh, uh, lines uh, for the transport of good trunks to the fabrics. So this is the aspect of former formidable uh, forest of Bukovina at the end of 19th, 19th, 19th century. So uh, when we see uh, the actual uh, state of the forest, we are very surprised that such destroyed uh, forest after clear cutting uh, regenerate with uh, a very good uh, quality of uh, trunks. 
in this uh, picture, you see a uh, left a sketch of maps of forest district in Ishest, located at the border of um, the, the mountains. And uh, with different uh, uh, colors, you see the area occupied by the primeval forest in black, by secondary forest in white, and by tertiary or um, uh, plantated uh, spruce uh, forest, artificial forest in horizontal uh, hachure. You see that uh, the first uh, map from 1883 gave that more than 50% of the area was primeval forest. Um, and uh, in the graphs in the right, you see the proportion of primeval forest that's in blue. The secondary forest is in red. And the tertiary or artificial forest is in yellow. You see. At the end of the 19th century, more than 50% of primeval, about 50 of secondary forest, and very few plantations. In 1913, we see that the plantations represent 5%, and in 1990, the plantations in former forest district, Ilishesh, was. 21% and only 5% primeval forest or structure comparable with primeval forest because different criteria permit us to, uh, to, to, to put each parcel in a category of structure. The same analysis we made for Solka forest district. And also you see for Margina and Codrovoi Bodesi, also this uh, two Forest districts are located in the most accessible zone and with the most uh, high density of um, installation for wood transformation at the end of 19th century. You see that now the primeval forests are missing, even in Marginia, where we identify only 1% of the total area as primeval forest, and in Quadruve Modesi, zero. So can explain that in only in 100 years, the structure of forest or dramatically changed, not only in the vertical and horizontal structure, but mainly in the capacity of production. If we look at the level of parcel, you can see I exemplify only the upper parcel 34 located at 600, between 600 and 800 meters. And you see, at the end of 19th century, the spruce was, uh, you see, uh, up, uh, uh, different thing for spruce, silver fir, and beech. At the end of 19th century, spruce was 20%, silver fir, 50%, and beech, 30%. At the end of the century, when we finished, our study, this is in our experimental forest district. The spruce represent more than 75%, beech and silver fir only 10 12 percent. The same situation for legislature in all the area dominated by the mixed forest. In synthesis, I present here the changes in the composition of the forest. At level of forest districts, that means all the parcels are involved in this analysis. And you see a transect from northwest to southwest of Bukovina, from Putna to Dornakandren, through Gurahumorui, Vama, Breza, Dornakandren. This is transect from the lower part of the Carpathians to the higher part. You see Dornakandren from 800 to 2100 meters. High. And you see the composition of forest, of total forest of the forest district at the end of 19th century and at the end of 20th century. In 100 years, in Putna, for example, spruce increased from 28% to 42, silver fir decreased from 42% to 18, and beech increased from 25 to 
28%. In Gurahumorli is more evident from 7% spruce increase to actual 31%, silver part decrease from 48% to 22%, and so on and so on. Other species represent the intervention with pine and uh, pines, different uh, species of pines and larch with the objective to use the degraded uh, uh, terrains and to uh, increase stability of the stem. Dona Candren is located mainly in the uh, belt of uh, dominant pure Norway spruce stem. So you see the changes are very low. But even here, you can see that silver part decreased for 11% in mean at the end of 19th century, at only 5% today, which is the same situation. So you have um, some example from the parcel to the whole area of the region concerning the impact of such changes. Mr. Barbo, we have a question which is related to this uh, subtopic coming from uh, your younger colleague from Suchava, Ilian Danila. He is asking, what can you tell us about the forest in Ukraine in general, or those from protected areas, such as the Uholka, I suppose I pronounce it correctly, Uholka Reserve, which we visit together in 2012, yes. come close to the forest in Bukovina or the secular reserve from here, such as Slatiwara, considering the times, foresters and the forestry school. So let's say let's say as a border comparison. Yes. Um, these are some similarities and uh, some differences between the Oholka uh, huge reserve of beech forest remained after the first uh, world war because the the fights between German, Austro-Hungary, Hungarian army and Russian army in this area produce huge damages on trees and these trees couldn't be harvested because they had a lot of splint of metal from the bombs. And so explained that this area remained untouched until today. This is my opinion. I visited with Julian this huge reserve, which is very, very impressive. And uh, we must have an explanation of this huge area, because this area after the, the First World War was an area in Czechoslovakia. So Professor Opletal, also the general director of the administration of the forest in Czechoslovakia, after leaving uh, Bukovina and tell us all these aspects concerning the history of this huge beach uh, forest. Concerning the organization of the exploitation uh, and uh, the use of the forest in the region, the problems are similar. Low density of, low density of population, uh, no market for wood uh, of beach because um, in this area, dominant are beach forests because the climate is more mild, uh, is Central Europe uh, influences, and Atlantic influences, so dominant are beach forests. In comparison with our area, where the, the continentality of clima favorize um, Norway spruce and silver fir, um, the aspect of forests are totally different. Okay, so I, thank you. I will, con I will continue. In uh, this uh, two picture, we present left the, the schematic presentation of the dynamic of useful volume in blue of damages calculated as percentage of damages area in 10 years, because every 10 years we have a revision of forest management plans. And every 10 years, we have a sum of damaged area and damaged volume. And also the stand stability in the mixed forest of Bukovina in a period from 1850 until the end of 20th uh, century. 
and you see the volume of good quality used in the industry increase two times, that means double. But sometimes you see the stability of the stand in green, uh, in, uh, in red, in red decrease. And the damages increase mainly after 1950. That means that after the arriving at maturity of the young plantation of spruce, the damages increase more and more. When most part of the forest are transformed in even edged forest, we show in the right scheme the frequency and the intensity of damages produced by different damaging factor in 100 years. That means one production site cycle, because around 100 years is the length of a production cycle in Bukovina. So you see that during the evolution of the uh, stand, many damaging factors like snow in blue, game in the red, wind in yellow, insects in green, rot in violet, and dark, uh, um, um, br dark brown is a total damages. You see that during the, um, the life cycle of a stand, or even edge stand, the damages produced by different factors can be very high. And you see there are two very sensitive periods, one before 40 years and another one before 80 years when wind and insect damaging uh, are uh, more uh, frequent. That give us the moment of intervention with thinning, with special measure to increase stability of trees and of the stands to snow and to wind. Because growing in a very high density, the stands uh, and the trees develop very um, sensitive parameters like slenderness coefficient, length of crown, uh, position of the um, uh, gravity center, and so on, and so on. So to ensure a stability of the stands until the end of the production cycle, we must make huge intervention and very focalized in the risky stands. Concerning your, question, your questions uh, about the damaging volume registered in the region, we made an analysis. For a long period from 1948 till 80, concerning the damaged volume stratified, statistically stratified, with the dominant forest types in Bukovina. Pure spruce forest in red, mixed forest of spruce and silver fir, mixed forest spruce, silver fir, and beech, mixed forest spruce, beech, and beech forest. And you see the damaged volume a total of 17 million cubic meter. And here you have a comparison of damage volume with standing volume for each analyzed forest type. Based on this data, we calculate an indicator of stability or of sensitivity of stands to wind. It's winter rate. Winter rate, this is a ratio between the quantity of damaged volume and the standing volume. We calculate this for every 10 years, and on the base of this indicator, we give the risk uh, note for each stand, for each site. And you see, for each forest type, uh, colors and number are, uh, uh, are um, Exemplified uh, uh, in the note, spruce, for example, has a winter rate 15.9%. That means in the period of 10 years, 15% of the standing volume is damaged. In comparison with beech forest, this winter rate is only 5%. That means three times lower. 
The same situation with the mixed stand spruce beech or uh, mixed stand spruce forest, uh, silver fir, and, and beech. This allow us to show the risk of transformation of mixed forest in pure Norway spruce forest or pure Norway spruce and uh, silver fir forest, which are mostly damaged by wind and by snow. Now with the increasing of temperature and uh, um, better condition for the insects, the frequency and intensity of damaging damages produced by insects, by ips, not only ips typographus, but uh, no, even ips duplicatus penetrate the lower part of the mountain uh, area is very, very risky. So we must be very careful with such stands. Some conclusion of my presentation can be summarized as follows. In the Carpathians, the low density of population and the lack of industry during the Middle Age and modern period have led to the conservation of the most part of the forest. Only the lower and the upper part of the forest massifs were affected by wood harvesting and grazing, respectively. At the end of 19th century, according to the forest management data, more than 80% of the forest in the whole Bukovina were primeval forests. Lack of access to mountainous slopes forced the overexploitation of the accessible zones at the end of 19th century. The practice of intensive silviculture starts at the beginning of 20th century when the effects of ever exploitation in the lower parts of the forest become visible and the new solution for artificial regeneration in sensitive area are proposed. The intensification of clear cut and the plantation of spruce instead of the former mixed forest and the utilization of the proper improper genetic material were registered on the larger and larger scale. After 1948, all the forests were confiscated by the state, therefore the position of the foresters become more and more important in the controlling of the forest operation and the forest damages. Also foresters must manage conflicts with local population. The adoption of new trends in forestry triggered major expenses which were not necessarily beneficial to the forest. For example, the conversion of coppice forest into standards or the substitution of beech and oak forest with conifers known for all the, um, the regions of Romania. Disturbances include generally stochastic processes that disrupt the structure and functionality of the forest ecosystems, and may include abiotic, like snow, wind, avalanches, fire, and biotic factors, insect pests, again. The intensity expressed as a percent of the damaged trees and the accent of disturbances expressed as percent of area affected by one event and the frequency of such events in the life cycle of trees are the most important element in the evaluation of the risk in the region or the site unit. Regional scale phenomena are responsible for the successional process that can take decades up to century, but fine scale phenomena are responsible for the maintaining the regeneration process and the dynamic of the stand structure in shorter periods. Both abiotic and biotic disturbances operate at regional scale, such as tempest in the Carpathians in 48, 62, 66, 72, 82, 96, 2002, or gypsy moth. You remember maybe the huge area devastated by Limantria Monaca, Gypsy Moth, in the period 1956 till 1959 in the Carpathians, from Borsec to Vakla Dorne and Dorna Kandre. And the fine scale, such as local damages 
produce caused by snow or excessive herbivory, mainly roe deer and the rain. Disturbances must be incorporated in the decisional process of forest management, considering the natural disturbances regime and the risk introduced by human transformation of the stands in the last decades and century through plantation and structure simplification. Predictability of disturbances is quite difficult. But risk evaluation can give us information at different scale concerning frequency, intensity, and extent regarding the regime of damage for a specific forest. Forest restoration efforts need to recognize that fine scale heterogeneity is very important in determining the composition of species for the next three generations, maintaining the population size and the stability and the resilience of the stem. The dynamics of the mountainous forest in the Carpathians are driven by infrequent but significant disturbance events such as snow, wind, drought, insects, and game. The integration of disturbing factors into the management system of the forest is opportunity to change the vertical and horizontal structure of the affected stands. The presence of deadwood and the stand gaps generate new ecological niches. The dispersion of insects and herbivores choose reducing the damage to young plants and trees. Please. Knowing the ecological root of disturbing factors allow us a more constructive approach by focusing our intervention to exposed stands located in high risk areas. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation, Mr. Barbu. We have at least two questions which are uh, somehow related. And I will start with the first one, uh, which is coming from Catalin Roibu. And uh, Catalin is uh, asking, what about the forest productivity and biodiversity in the context of climate change? Is the German silviculture or the European silviculture a model to manage the Romanian forest? What about the Romanian model? Uh, Romanian don't need models from uh, Europe because the models which we uh, imported from uh, Western Europe, uh, like uh, plantation of uh, Norway spruce and uh, of uh, pines, uh, give us uh, a uh, very costly re response. response. The mass part of Wallachia and uh, Moldavia, not Bukovina and Moldavia, was influenced by the French school of silviculture because most of the foresters at the end of 19th century, for Romanian foresters, studied in Nancy. So the impact of the French school of the forestry in whole. Wallachia and Moldavia is very, very large. And this aspect can be an example for the, uh, the, the model of uh, close to nature silviculture of uh, today. today. Uh, concerning the question of uh, Catalin, I must insist to the role of the scientific investigation in our primeval forest in comparison with actual forest to show the distance between managed and natural forest, to study biodiversity, to study stability, resilience, and productivity. Concerning the productivity, we must assume that actual productivity of the forest is too high, in my opinion, because maintaining very dense stand until 60 years or uh, is a very high risk, I said, because the structure and the stability parameters of trees expose these exemplars to damages produced by biotic and abiotic. Uh, if we take into consideration our results concerning the evolution and the differences approved with the data from forest management trends, we have 
a very good mirror of the model to show or to, to, to recommend for the forestry in Romania and to, in, in Europe. Thank you very much. I want to continue with another question uh, which is coming from Julian Bratu from Lucian Blaga University of Sibiu. Julian is asking, is there a correlation between forestry operation and natural disasters? Does the forest managed, the managed forest with works applied in time behave better in the face of disasters? So do the do the managed forest behave better in the face of disaster in comparison with unmanaged forest? This um, concept, unmanaged forest, in my opinion, is very risky because we put a lot of forest in the protection forms like Natura 2000, for example, in which huge area of former stands, artificial produced or natural regenerated after the cutting of the forest. And this is not only the situation of Bukovina, all over in, in Romania, mainly in the beach forest from South Carpathians, need intervention, need thinning. All this forest were planified in the last 70 years for wood production according with age classes. So all the stands need a reduction of number of trees per hectare because with the age, we know that every tree need, uh, need more and more nutrition space. So without intervention is a very big mistake because such stands will collapse when they accumulate a lot of biomass and uh, damaging factors can occur and destroy integrally such forests. We must explain to the angels and the experts in the known intervention that it is a nonsense to discuss the actual management of the forest without taking into context or in discussion the history and the past management of the forest. If the forest is a former primeval forest, is a former natural evaluate, evaluated, evaluated uh, forest, we can uh, remain at the nature uh, laws. But when the forests were planted or natural regenerated like uh, beach forest, which was uh, clear cutted or um, simplified uh, in the 50 till uh, 80 uh, of the past uh, century is very, very risky. Thank you. I want to continue with another question uh, coming from Ms. Cornelia Gezio. Would there be a benefit in uh, reintroducing uh, beech trees in Bukovina? Um, the benefits um, can be very, very large. First of all, in the landscape aspect, the broadleaves are very important because give a more uh, sophisticated and more diverse aspect of the forest in all the periods of the year. The second one is that we must not introduce beach because beach come alone with the increase of mean temperature, with the global warming, the beach refined his place in the former um, mixed forest or in the actual uh, 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 Norway spruce forest. Our studies show a tendency of the increase of the fragments of beech and of sycamore in the forest, in the mountainous forest, all over in, in the Carpathians. So, Beech is a very interesting species, not because we discover the valence, the values of wood of beech, but beech is also um, connected with the improving of soil quality because planting Norway spruce on the place of former mixed forest or beech forest will produce huge transformation of the humus form and in time 
of the parameters of the soil, not only pH, but only the uh, the, the the bonity of the of the soil. So coming beach in our future forest is a beneficial for the improving quality of the soils. Thank you. We have another interesting question coming from Professor Marcel Flocea. He wrote it in Romanian and I will read it in Romanian because I don't want to alter the sense. So uh, Professor Flocea is asking, Integrarea efectelor factorilor perturbatori în, planurilor de în planurile de management este realmente posibilă, mai ales în condițiile în care, de exemplu, efectele doborătorilor conduc și la creșterea daunelor produse de ipide? Um, Marcel is a colleague of mine and uh, he started his activity um, discussing the long, long days and uh, nights all the aspects of the forest. I know that Marcel calls uh know the answer but i can show that a more more elastic system of forest management planning and a more um uh, large attributes of engineers in the forestry can give the possibility to integrate all these aspects in the management system because the forest management plans is for is made for 10 years But in this interval of 10 years, the engineer for the forest district can, uh, can introduce his uh, knowledge and uh, his uh, inventivity in the better management of each stand. We cannot give uh, rules for all the stands from the desk, from the bureau. No. Knowing the reality, integration each day and each month in the in the forest our experience with the reality can contribute to a better um, evaluation of the stance and also to a better uh, uh, application of uh, the forest management measures thank you professor flocha has another question and i already translated it into english he's asking Which are the costs for managing diversified structures in comparison with, let's say, the regular structures? And uh, which are the differences regarding the quality and the quantity of uh, wood producted? Uh, yes, uh, this is a good, good question. But uh, if we look at the quality of the forest, we can have to two answers. If we look from far, our forest, they're magnificent, impressive. But if we look inside the forest, we see a lot of, um, of damages which made responsible the forester because the damages produced by har wood harvesting, damages produced by um, the game, Damages produced by different other damaging factors are not extracted at time. And so we find frequently in the forest very bad quality of trees. The question concerning the quality of wood for the um, pure uh, Norway spruce stems and mixed stems is a problem of the future. We must ask the future generation and the future uh, societies what they need from the forestry, what quality of wood and what species are at the mode. If we look at the in, in time, the uh, versatility of the industry and uh, of the in furniture, for example, is very, very high. So I imagine that broad leaves can be very useful if the stands are correct um, uh, conduced or correct uh, seen it in accordance with the prescription of the forest management plans because the forest engineers from the forest district must participate integrally in the formulation of the solution of the forest management plans so generally speaking it was a period when 
coniferous uh, wood was very, uh, very high price, very easy to produce, very easy to harvest. But now uh, this limitation uh, obliged us to change the, 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 the system of thinking concerning the forest. And we must uh, construct more and more uh, roads to ensure the accessibility of wood. If not, we are condemned to remain with this, um, uh, well, how can I see, with this primitive uh, system of exploitation using only the tractors. I have uh, the very last question, somehow you answered to it, but I will ask you please to provide us, uh, let's say, a detailed answer. In your opinion, and taking into account your vast experience, what do you think in the case of uh, Norway spruce forest from Bukovina and also the Norway spruce forest across Romanian Carpathians? which situation is the best the current one dealing with uh, clear cuttings that are limited up to three hectares or the one from 50 or 100 years ago where the area were larger and why uh, yes um, this is a difficult uh, uh, answer to, to formulate because in the low we can put um, maximum one hectare clear cutting in the spruce forest. But uh, when a wind uh, comes, he uh, uh, transform 100 uh, uh, hectares of, of forest in an uh, incredible damaged uh, area with very high cost to harvest the wood, with high diminution of the quality of wood because Harvesting, exploiting um, area damaged by by wind is very high costs and very risky. This is an, an aspect. Nature give us the answer, not the the, the law. The second uh, aspect of the answer is that um, Norway spruce forests, actual Norway spruce forests in Romania are very, very different in comparison with the Norway spruce forest at the beginning of 20th century. In whole Romania, I will explain. After 50, after the Second World War, most part of the hydrologic basins in Southern Carpathians and in Transylvania were clear-cutted and even in the natural Norway spruce forest and planted with Norway spruce. But the provenance, the genetic provenance of Norway spruce used for the plantation of huge area, clear cut or damaged by wind was in my opinion, improper. I remember that with my professor, Marin Marco, professor of climatology and meteorology in the forestry faculty, we studied for a long period the um, drought of young plantation of spruce in Fogarash mountains up to 1,400 1, meters. The explanation was very easy. Genetically, the material used pro, uh, had the provenance from the lower stems, very productive, but with spruce from the type of um, came come fichte, came um, ramification, if you remember from the typology of the spruce, which was transferred in the upper part of the mountain where the stressors are not the same. So the resistance of such plantation to damaging factors like snow winter desiccation, mainly snow winter desiccation, but also blizzard and other uh, uh, wind uh, uh, factors in in, uh, in in the winter produce huge area uh, damaged by such factors. So for large areas of the former natural spruce forest, we transfer 
genetic material from lower part of the area to the upper part, and this is a very big mistake. Our colleague, Professor Tanusha, made 40 years or 30 years ago a very detailed study concerning the resistance of different provenance of spruce from different altitudes to this phenomenon of snow winter desiccation in winter. Um, the plantate, uh, uh, pl pl planted um, spruce outside their natural area, which occupied more than 300,000 hectares, most of them were destroyed by different damaging factors. The last one is the huge area damaged by Ips duplicatus, show us that it's possible to plant Norway spruce, uh, pines, and even on the place of beech and oaks. But the large period of drought and also the changes in the uh, soil fertility can produce very, very high damages in periods which uh, can be between 30 and 40 years. So in my opinion, I worked more than 20 years in the study of the Norway spruce planted outside their natural area. And my opinion is that it was a mistake which costed uh, Romanian uh, silviculture more than 2 billion euros. Uh, uh, this is uh, estimation made by Professor Giorgio. And the result were very, very uh, disca uh, discussing because this plantation were made to ensure raw material for the pulp and paper uh, fabrics in, uh, in Romania. But you know that after 90, all this in the industry of uh, pulp and paper, of cellulose, of, uh, were closed and all these uh, plantations uh, remained without, uh, without use. The quality of, of wood, resinous, generally speaking, resinous wood in the uh, culture planted uh, outside the natural uh, area, uh, Norway spruce especially, is very, very low. I not enter in the details. Thank you very much for this uh, exhaustive answer. So, Mr. Barbu, since uh, we are at the end of our life, could you please draw a general conclusion of your presentation? What what would be the main idea? What would, would be the takeaway message for tonight? The takeaway message is a message for um, an uh, invitation to study in deep the evolution of each forest. Each forest engineer has in the archive forest management plans since 48 till today. So they can make a very easy study of the changes in the composition, in the structure, productivity, and damages, because you know every uh, forest management plan has also um, quantities and uh, intensity of uh, uh, intervention in each uh, tenant. 